This right here is the Sigma 18-50 f2.8. B-roll! This lens was released a little over a year ago and it's still currently Sigma's only zoom lens for Sony APS-C cameras and it's leading in its class with a lightweight and compact design. What makes this lens even more impressive is it can stop down to f2.8 whilst delivering lightning fast autofocus, incredible image quality and bonkers macro capabilities. So the real question here, is this the best zoom lens for Sony APS-C cameras? Recently I was down in London and I shot a ton of photos and videos with this lens to get a real good sense of how it performs out in the real world and share with you my hands-on experience. Full transparency here, I did ask Sigma to send me out this lens for testing purposes and they were more than happy to oblige but unfortunately I don't get to keep this lens but I am at liberty to say whatever I want about it. They don't get to review this video before it goes live or have any input in the final video. The first thing you'll notice about this lens is its size. It is tiny. It is actually smaller than my phone and it only weighs 286 grams. And compared to its competitors, which I'd say are the Sony 16-55 and the Tamron 17-70, the Sigma has a smaller compact design whilst being roughly half the weight and maintains a constant f2.8 aperture. The other two lenses are also constant f2.8 but I think it's highly impressive that the Sigma is considering aperture lenses that are constant are usually bigger, bulkier and heavier. So this lens is incredibly well designed and is currently the smallest and lightest standard zoom lens for Sony APS-C cameras. When hands-on with this lens you'll notice it feels premium. Sigma have used a really good mixture of materials to put this lens together so even though it's a lightweight lens it doesn't feel cheap and nasty. I also like the addition of a focus ring to really allow you to fine tune manual focus and the zoom rocker is smooth and a really good size. And when you pair this lens with a small camera like the Sony a6400 it just feels right in the hand. It's a really easy everyday carry. The overall build quality of this lens is exceptional. It's a durable little thing and I've put it through some heavy stuff and it's been able to handle everything I've thrown at it. The Sigma 18-50 is an extremely versatile lens. It's like a dependable Swiss army knife. And I want to share with you some photo examples to truly show you the photo capabilities of this lens. First off, on the wide end, you can use that 18mm to photograph some stunning wide shots, making it ideal if you wanted to do some architecture or landscape photography. Zoomed all the way in at 50, you'll have plenty of reach for a variety of shooting scenarios. I think this lens is ideal if you want instrument for travel or even just everyday use. I've been primarily using it for street photography and for me, this is where I've seen the versatility of this lens come into its own. I've really been able to utilize the set of focal lengths on this lens to capture all the everyday street moments that are happening all around us. In a way, I feel like street photography has been way easier with a smaller camera lens combo because you can really remain incognito. So I've been able to get super up close to subjects without them even noticing and capture some truly incredible shots. With the f2.8 on this lens, it doesn't always seem like you need a prime lens. The bokeh on this lens is stunning. When you get close to a subject at 18mm or zoomed all the way in at 50, you'll get superb background blur and subject separation. When testing out this lens, I was really surprised with the macro capabilities. You can get the lens super close to a subject and still maintain focus. It's not ever going to replace a proper macro lens, but for people who just want to take some nice close-up detail shots, this lens will be spot on. Image quality is something I've always been impressed by when it comes to Sigma lenses from lenses I've used or lenses I've owned. Every single one of them I've ever used has always delivered in this apartment. Department department not in this apartment not here specifically with this particular lens i think sigma were quite ambitious because they were trying to reduce the amount of glass elements that they were using while still providing stunning image quality and whilst reducing the weights and they absolutely nailed it at all focal lengths this lens is crazy sharp and it is going to deliver you some stunning results the Sigma 18-50 uses a stepping motor which provides lightning fast and accurate autofocus for both photography and video. 
When doing the video focus test, I set the AF drive speed on my A6400 to fast and the AF track sensitivity to responsive to clearly demonstrate how rapid the autofocus is from this plucky little lens. Not only is the autofocus accurate, it's silent, so if you're planning on using it for video, it would be a pretty good choice. In my opinion, there is only one drawback with this lens, and that is the lack of optical steady shot. I think a few people are going to be disappointed by this. However, from my own personal experience from using it for the last couple of weeks, I never felt like I needed it for photography. F2.8 is sharp enough that in most shooting scenarios, you can maintain a fast enough shutter speed to get sharp results. If you are planning on using this lens in lower light situations then you may begin to struggle but I can see why Sigma decided not to put OSS in this lens and that's simply for the purposes of keeping the weight and size to a minimum. However if you're a video shooter not having OSS could be a deal breaker. I would personally say that this lens is far better than a standard kit lens even though that does have optical steady shot but that's purely on the basis that this lens is sharper and it has a constant f2.8 aperture. As someone who shoots a lot of video, having a sharper lens that is constant is far more important than a lens with optical steady shot. There are two workarounds I see for not having a stabilized lens. The first one is shooting in higher frame rates such as 60 or 120 FPS and slowing it down in post. Alternatively, picking up a gimbal could be a good route to take and if you're going to be doing paid gigs with it, having a gimbal is a must nowadays anyway. For me personally, the lack of OSS is the only drawback to this lens, but honestly, if I was using it just for photography, then I wouldn't care, and I'd say that this is the best all-round zoom lens for Sony APS-C cameras. What makes this Sigma lens even more impressive is the price. You could pick one of these up, brand new, from Amazon, for only £429, that's roughly $499. It's got a budget price tag to it, but it certainly ain't a budget lens, and compared to its competitors, the Sigma also beats it in this department as well. Being roughly £250 cheaper than the Tamron 17-70, and a whopping jaw-dropping £594 cheaper than the Sony 16-55. You could buy this lens, lose it, then buy another one and still be better off than buying the Sony 16-55. That's kind of mad to think about. If you want to check out this beastly or mighty little lens for yourself, I've left it linked in the description below. It is an Amazon affiliate link, so if you do buy through that link, it costs you nothing extra, but I do get a little bit of kickback, a little bit of wonga from that, and it just helps support the channel. Overall, this lens is fantastic. By no means is it perfect, but honestly, what lens is? The Sigma 18-50 is well designed, it's perfect for travel, versatile and ridiculously compact, whilst providing photographers and video shooters all the tools required to capture some stunning visuals. If you are someone on the market who is looking for a high premium quality zoom lens that isn't going to break the bank but is going to allow you to take your content to the next level, then I'd highly recommend checking out this lens for yourself. So there you go, I hope this video has been informative and it's been helpful. But the last thing we're going to do today is have a look through the hashtag CP photos and see what you guys have been creating. Screen recording is going and the first one we're going to have a look at is this one here by Photos18. This is a very beautiful vista and I like that very random tree right there with different colours. That is pretty cool. Lovely landscape shot. Great way to kick things off. This is a pretty cool shot right here by Flip. Really cool uh, bike shots right here. I like the aesthetics. I like the tones. Nailed it. That black and white one's pretty cool as well. All of these are pretty sick. This is an absolutely stunning sunrise or sunset. That looks like the Sahara Desert because I've seen a sunrise at the Sahara Desert and it was the most beautiful sunrise I've ever seen. And it's a shot by Gaston with an iPhone 14. Very impressive stuff. Scroll on a little bit more. This is a cool look up shot right here with the plane by Maxar Visuals. This is really sick right here. I love that shot. Oh, we've got a bit of rallying again. This one by SJM.rallying. That panning shot has been nailed on all levels of perfection. I love it. Uh, this is a really nice shot of um, uh, the Tower Bridge. How did I nearly forget the name of that for a second? By Still B Z. Lovely, lovely shot. Stunning. 5 a.m. You, you committed waking up that early, mate. And we're going to have a look at two more photographs today. The first one being this one by MC Visuals. Now, that is a perspective I've never seen before, and it is stunning. And in black and white, 
That is absolutely gorgeous. What an angle, what a shot. And the final one we're going to have a look at today is this one of this Lamborghini by Pier 23. And um, oh, what a Lambo indeed. A classic beauty and captured on all levels of perfection. Absolutely stunning frames. A massive shout out to everyone continuing to use the hashtag CP photos over on Instagram. If you're not using it, get involved and your work might be featured here on the channel. But with all that said, that is where I'm going to be leaving today's video with the Sigma 18 to 50. What are your thoughts on this lens? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you did like today's video, if it was helpful, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, turn on the bell icon so you're notified whenever I release a new video. But the last thing I'm going to say today, guys, is until next time, create create, explore, and inspire. And I'll see you in the next one. Laters.